For years, U.S. intelligence agencies have claimed that China is expanding its nuclear weapon arsenal. To make a significant number of warheads, China would have to produce more fissile material, in particular, weapons-grade plutonium. Using open source documents and satellite imagery, we have identified new reprocessing infrastructure that China may use to extract this material. Here's how we did it. We know that nearly all nuclear reactors produce plutonium as a byproduct of fission, but most reactors constructed for power generation, or so-called light water reactors, produce only reactor-grade plutonium with a lower concentration of the plutonium-239 isotope than in the plutonium commonly used for weapons. The only known reactors where China could easily produce significant quantities of weapons-grade plutonium are its sodium-cooled fast breeder reactors. Unlike traditional light water reactors, fast breeder reactors have cores surrounded by so-called blanket assemblies rich in the uranium-238 isotope. When the core emits neutrons during operation, the uranium-238 needs to absorb just a single neutron to become uranium-239 and then decay naturally into plutonium-239. That's the key material needed to build a nuclear warhead. To extract this material, the blanket assemblies must be removed from the reactor and transported to a reprocessing facility, where the plutonium is separated chemically from the rest of the heavy metal. China has expanded its reprocessing capacity significantly in recent years, building three reprocessing facilities nearly simultaneously at an industrial park in Jinta, Gansu province. But we found indications that the reprocessing of assemblies discharged from the fast breeder reactors is taking place here, at Plant 404, where China used to produce and separate plutonium for weapons. Since the military facilities were shut down around the late 1980s, China has built and operated a pilot reprocessing plant to recycle civilian reactor spent fuel. Successful testing of plant equipment in 2010 was followed by construction to complete plant infrastructure, including facilities for spent fuel storage and waste processing. Since 2020, however, a more significant expansion has taken place. Publicly available Chinese procurement documents indicate that this building adjacent to the original pilot reprocessing plant, referred to as the 602 subproject, houses a new reprocessing line for assemblies discharged from China's fast breeder reactors. In 2021, the plant procured storage racks for discharged fast breeder assemblies. It also procured underwater illumination and watertight gates for the spent fuel storage pool, as well as underwater carts, baskets, and tilting cranes to transfer the assemblies from the pool to the hot cells for reprocessing. Additional procurement documents indicate that the new building houses equipment for shearing and dissolving fuel or blanket elements to prepare them for uranium and plutonium separation. It also houses tanks that contain the dissolving chemical, the neutron absorber to prevent accidental criticality during dissolution and the rinsing solution for the end pieces left behind after all the heavy metal, like uranium and plutonium, has been dissolved. Can this one building contain an entire reprocessing line? We believe it can. See this similarly shaped building that's slightly smaller? That's a reprocessing lab at the China Institute of Atomic Energy in Beijing. Equipped with nine hot cells and six warm cells, it's a mini reprocessing line that's able to reprocess one spent fuel rod per day. So, what does this all mean? Technically, it means China now has the infrastructure to reprocess the assemblies removed from its fast breeder reactors, including blanket assemblies containing weapons-grade plutonium. But it is still unclear whether the material will be used for producing weapons or for fabricating reactor fuel. While it is an ideal bomb fuel, plutonium-239 could also be used to produce mixed uranium-plutonium oxide fuel, or MOX fuel, for civilian reactors. China's intergovernmental agreements with Russia prohibit it from using the CEFR and the first CFR 600 fast breeder reactor to produce fissile material for weapons. Additionally, China's civilian nuclear fuel cycle is heavily dependent on imported uranium. Its bilateral agreements with supplier countries impose obligations not to divert transferred nuclear materials from peaceful uses. Some of these agreements require the tracking of the material throughout the nuclear fuel cycle which would make it tricky for China to mix its military and civilian fuel cycles. At the pilot reprocessing plant itself, much of the spent fuel in the storage pools came from the French-supplied reactors at the Diabe nuclear power plant. Meanwhile, German companies are involved in the construction of a waste vitrification facility for the pilot reprocessing plant, just a few hundred meters away from the new reprocessing line. As a nuclear weapon state, China is allowed to produce fissile material for weapons, and it could use its civilian reprocessing infrastructure to do so. But there is a line of separation between its civilian and military fuel cycles, and it remains to be seen whether Beijing would choose to cross it.